<clears throat> Good afternoon, as it is. Oh, just had some lunch <clears throat> at the Buddha Patipa London. Nice day, I've been working, um, power washing the patio of the temple. So this is the third video of this. <clears throat> I realise it's uh, backwards, but you know. The Manuals of Buddhism um, by Maha Teri Thera Ledi Sayadaw Aga Maha Pandita Dilat. <clears throat> so, so far we have done <clears throat> the three Vipalasa, the three Manyana, and the two Abhine Vesa. So now we are on to the two Bhumi or stages. <clears throat> so let's get started. <clears throat> The two Bhumi or stages, Bhumi means the stage where all creatures find their footing, generate and glow. It is of two kinds, to wit, Putu Jana Bhumi and Arya Bhumi. Putu Jana Bhumi is the stage of a uh, Putu Jana. An ordinary or normal being, and speaking in the sense of ultimate truth, it is nothing but the hallucination of views. All creatures of the ordinary world, worldly kind, live in the world, making this Diti Vipalasa or erroneous view their resting place, their main support their standing ground. <clears throat> there is in me or in my body something that is permanent, good and essential. The Deity Man Anna or fantasy through error, the Deity Gaha or erroneous hold, the Deity Papancha or multiplier of error, and the Diti Abhi Nivesa, or strong belief induced by error, and also the landing stages, the supports, the resting places, and the standing grounds of all Putu Janas. <clears throat> Hence, they will never be released from the state or existence of a Putu Jana so long as they take their firm stand on the ground of the said many titled error. <clears throat> as to the Arya Bhumi, it is the state of an Arya, a noble and sanctified being, in whom hallucination is eradicated. It is speaking in the ultimate sense, nothing but this right view this right apprehension, the right understanding. There is in me or in my body nothing permanent, good and essential. As an Arya lives making right view his main footing, this right view may be called the stage of the Arya. Upon the attainment of this right view, a being is said to have transcended the Puttujana Bhumi and to have set foot on the Aryan stage. Among the innumerable ordinary beings, Putujanas, who have been treading the ground of Putujana ship during countless existences that have no known beginning, if a certain person trying to eradicate the hallucination of error to implant the right view within himself on a certain day succeeds in his attempts, he is said to have set foot that 
self same day upon the ground of the Arya and to have become an Arya that is a sanctified being even if there should remain the hallucinations of mind and perception in some of the Aryas they would not commit such evil deeds as would produce for them evil effects in the worlds of misfortune for they have eradicated the weighty hallucination of error the two remaining hallucinations would merely enable them to enjoy such worldly pleasures as they have lawfully earned. <clears throat> the two Gati. Gati means transmigration. Here it does not mean that transmigration of soul, so called, which is current in non Buddhist philosophies. I have adopted the word transmigration for Gati, which literally means going, merely in order to indicate the idea while dealing with it from the standpoint of Buddhist philosophy. It is the change of existences. It is of two kinds, Puttujana Gati and Arya Gati. Of these two, the former is the transmigration of the ordinary person, which is vinipatana, <coughs> or dispersive. That is to say, one cannot transmigrate into whatever kind of existence one might wish, but is liable to fall into any one of the 31 kinds of abodes or existences, according as one is thrown by one's past karma. Just as, in the case of the fall of a coconut or of a palm fruit from a tree, it cannot be ascertained beforehand where it will rest, so also in the case of the new existence <coughs> of a put to Jana after his death. It cannot be ascertained beforehand where unto he will transmigrate. Every creature that comes into life is inevitably laid in wait for by the evil of death, and after his death he is also sure to fall by dispersion into any existence. Thus two great evils of death and dispersion are inseparably linked to every being born. Of these two, dispersion of life after death is worse than death, for the four realms of misery down to the great Avicii hell stand wide open to a Putujana who departs from the abode of men, like space like space without any obstruction. As soon as the term of life expires, he may fall into any of the Niraya or realms of misery. Whether far or near, there is no intervening period of time. He may be reborn as an animal, as a peta, a wretched shade, or as an asura or titan. An enemy of Saka, the king of the gods, in the wink of an eye. The like holds good if he dies out of any of the upper six realms of the Kama Wachara Devas. But when he expires from the worlds of Rupaloka and Arupaloka, there is no direct fall into the four realms of misery. For there is a halt of one existence either in the abode of men or in those of devas, wherefrom he may fall into the four worlds of misery. Why do we say that every being fears death? Because death is followed by dispersion to any sphere of existence. If there is no 
dispersion as regards existence after death, and one could take rebirth in any existence one chooses, no one would fear death so much. Although, to be sure, sometimes there may be a thirst for death when a being after living a considerable length of time in one existence desires removal to a new one. By way of showing how great the dispersion of existence, which is called Putujana Gati, the Nakasika and Kana Kachapa Suttas may be cited. However, only an outline of each will be will here be produced. <clears throat> so a little quote here I'll uh, read this first. The all brethren I will teach you the all. Do you listen to it? And what brethren is the all? It is the it is I and visible object, ear and sound, nose and scent, tongue and taste, body and tangibles, mind and ideas. This brethren is called the all. Now, brethren, he who should say, rejecting this all, I will proclaim some other all. Such might be the substance of his talk, but when questioned, he would not be able to make good his boast, and he would become by disappointment besides. What is the cause of that? Because, brethren, it would be beyond his power to do so. S. N. 4.15 Okay. The Naka Sika Sutta. At one time the Buddha, showing them some dust which he had taken upon the tip of his fingernail, addressed the disciples thus, If, O bhikkhus, these grains of dust upon my fingernail, and all the dust in the universe, were compared in quantity, which would you say was less, and which more? The disciples replied, Lord, the dust on your fingernail is less, and that of the universe is more. Surely, Lord, the dust on your fingernail is not worthy of mention in comparison with the dust of the universe. Then the Buddha continued, Even so, bhikkhus, those who are reborn in the abodes of men and devas whence they have expired, are very few, even as the few grains of dust on my fingernail. And those who are reborn in the four realms of misery are exceedingly many, even as the dust of the great universe again. Those who have expired from the four miserable worlds and are reborn in the abodes of men and devas are few, even as the grains of dust on my fingernail. And those who are repeatedly reborn in the four miserable worlds are innumerable, even as the grains of dust of the great universe. What has just been said is the substance of the Nakasika Sutta, but to say nothing of the beings of all the four realms of misery, the creatures that inhabit the four great oceans alone will suffice to make evident how great is the evil of Vini Patana Gati, that is, the dispersion, the variety of possible kinds of existence after death. The way Kunda to get quite and rid of those false views and the domains in which they arise and crop up and obtain is by seeing with right comprehension that there is no mine, no this is I, no this is myself, Saleka Sutta. <coughs> A 
Kana Kacha Pasuto. At one time the Buddha addressed the disciples thus there is O bhikkhus in the ocean of turtle. Both of whose eyes are blind. He plunges into the water of the unfathomable ocean and swims about incessantly in any direction, wherever his head may lead. There is also in the ocean the yoke of a cart which is ceaselessly floating about on the surface of the water and is carried away in all directions by tide, current and wind. Thus these two go on throughout an incalculable space of time. Perchance it happens that in the course of time the yoke arrives at the precise place and time where and when the turtle puts his head puts up his head and yokes on to it. Now, O Bhikkhus, is it possible that such a time might come as is said? In ordinary truth, O Lord, replied the Bhikkhus, it is impossible. But time being so spacious and an eon lasting so long, it may be admitted that perhaps at some time or other it might be possible for the two to yoke together. As said, if the blind turtle lives long enough and the yoke does not tend to rot and break up before such a coincidence comes to pass, then the Buddha said, O bhikkhus, the occurrence of such a strange thing is not to be counted a difficult one, for there is still a greater, a hundred times, a thousand times more difficult than this lying hidden from your knowledge. And what is this? It is, O bhikkhus, the obtaining of the opportunity of becoming a man again by a man who has expired and is reborn once in any of the four realms of misery. The occurrence of the yoking of the blind tortoise is not worth thinking of as a difficult occurrence in comparison therewith, because those who perform good deeds and abstain from doing bad alone can obtain the existence of men and devas. The beings in the four miserable worlds cannot discern what is virtuous and what is vicious, what good and what bad, what moral and what immoral, what meritorious and what demeritorious, and consequently they live a life of immorality and demerit, tormenting one another with all their power. Those creatures of the Niraya and Peta abodes in particular live a very miserable life on account of punishments and torments which they experience with sorrow, pain and distress. Therefore, O Bhikkhus, the opportunity of being reborn in the abode of men is a hundred times, a thousand times harder to obtain than the encountering of the blind turtle with the yoke. According to this sutta, why those creatures who are born in the miserable, miserable plains are far from human existence is because they never look up but always look down. And what is meant by looking down? The ignorance in them by degrees becomes greater and stronger from one existence to another. And as the water of a river always flows down to the lower plains, so also they are always tending towards the lower existences. For the ways towards the higher existences are closed to them, while those towards the lower existences are freely open. This is the meaning of looking down. Hence, from this story of the blind turtle, 
The wise apprehend how great, how fearful, how terribly perilous are the evils of the Putujanagati, i.e. the dispersion of existence. What has been said is concerning the Putujanagati. Now, what is Aryagati? It is deliverance from the dispersion of existence after death or it is the disappearance of that dispersion of existence, which is conjoined with the destiny of inevitable death in every existence. It is also the potential pen, potentiality of being reborn in higher existences or in existences according to one's choice. It is also not like the fall of coconuts from trees but it is to be compared to birds which fly through the air to whatsoever place or tree on which they may to may wish to perch. Those men, devas and brahmas who have attained the Aryan state can get to whatever better existence, i.e. as men, devas, brahmas, they may wish to be reborn into when they expire from the particular existence in which they have attained such Aryan state. Though they expire unexpectedly without aiming to be reborn in any particular existence, they are destined to be reborn in a better or higher existence, and at the same time are entirely free from rebirth into lower and miserable existences. Moreover, if they are reborn again in the abode of men, they never become of the lower or poorer classes, nor are they fools or heretics, but become quite otherwise. It is the same in the abodes of devas and brahmas. They are, they are entirely set free from the Pudujanagati. What has been said is concerning the course of Arya. Now we will explain the two Gati side by side. When a man falls from a tree, he falls like a coconut, because he has no wings with which to fly in the air. In precisely the same way, when men, devas and brahmas, who are put to jhana, Riveted into the hallucination of wrong views and having no wings of the noble eightfold path to make the sky a resting place. Transmigrate after the dissolution of their present bodies into new ones. They fall tumbling into the bones of the evils of dispersion. In this world, ordinary men who climb up very high trees fall tumbling to the ground. When the branches which they clutch or try to make their resting place break down, they suffer much pain from the fall, and sometimes death ensues because they have no other resting places but the branches. Neither have they wings wherewith to fly in the air. It is the same with men, devas and brahmas who have the hallucination of wrong views. When the resting place of wrong views as regards self is broken down, they fall tumbling into the dispersion of existence. For their resting places are only their bodies, and they have neither such a resting place as nibbana nor such strong wings as the noble eightfold path to support them. As for the birds, though the branches they rest on may break, they never fall, but easily fly through the air to any other tree. For the branches are not their permanent resting places, but only temporary ones. They entirely rely on their wings and the air. In the same way, men, devas and brahmas who have become Arya are, and are freed from the hallucination of wrong views 
neither regard the bodies as their atta or self, nor rely upon them. They have in their possession permanent resting places, such as Nibbana, which is the entire cessation of all tumbling existence. They also possess the very mighty wings of the Noble Eightfold Path, which are able to bear them to better existences. What has been said is concerning the distinction between the two Gati, i.e. the Puttajana Gati and the Arya Gati. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, kind of concerning which uh, a lot of these sort of explanations do instill some fear in the reader listener and that's for sure thinking about possible bad karmas that we've done ourselves uh, so and we can just hope that we're already Arya or at some point in this life we'll gain right view from learning, meditation and uh, yeah, general sticking to the five precepts as much as possible. Yeah, so yeah, I wouldn't really want to be born in the in the bad state. I'd rather be a Deva, a Brahma or human. So that was the two boomier stages, the and the two gati, and the nakasika sutta, and the kana kapa sutta. So quite interesting. Okay, that'll be enough for now. I've got some work to do. So hopefully that was good and I'll catch you later.